In February, the United States Agency for International Development pulled funding from international and South African partners, cutting support for HIV AIDS care under PEPFAR. More recently, the National Institutes of Health withdrew grants worth billions of rands for medical research. This is devastating, considering that up to 70% of South Africa's medical research is NIH funded. Right now, it might not feel like these cuts affect you directly, but they will. Hi, my name's Tamza Metlekamp, and I'm a journalist with Maverick Citizen at Daily Maverick. Governments and health organizations are scrambling to fill the gaps that have been left behind, impacting not just South Africa, but the international fight against diseases like HIV and TB. In 20 years ago, um, people in the prime of their lives, maybe um, the parents, and um, sisters and brothers of people that are listening died of, of HIV. And so when I was a young pediatrician um, 20 years ago, we saw in our faces the devastation of not having access to treatment. And um, we saw um, how by um, rolling out antiretroviral therapy, we were able to breathe, literally breathe life into um, many, many um, uh, millions of, of South Africans. And so over time, if from a time when most South Africans, because of HIV, would only live to 56, 58 years of life, antiretroviral therapy um, has directly um, increased life expectancy. In the short term, it means that vulnerable populations like low-income women, LGBTQIA plus people, and those in remote areas are losing access to life-saving care. In the long run, it threatens our ability to combat deadly infectious diseases and weakens global collaboration against future pandemics. The treatment of HIV AIDS in South Africa has come an enormously long way in the last 20 years, due in large part to the incredible work of local activists and physicians. You're younger, you weren't around 25 years ago uh, when the HIV epidemic was at its worst. but. You know, we should never be complacent. I think we have become complacent in some ways. And, and, and society has been allowed to become complacent because behind the scenes, there's been a huge effort through PEPFAR, through clinicians, through the research Glenda and others and, and so on have done, which have meant that we've make, kept the architecture of the response to HIV at a high level and an effective level for, 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 for now 20, 20 years. But, you know, what people forget is what it was like in the early 2000s when there were up to a thousand deaths a day at one point in this country. People, it's amazing that memory can disappear. You know, I went to two funerals on one day of the same day of, of, of TAC leaders. And, you know, it's an extreme scenario to go back to that. But it's not impossible because... The HIV is still with us. It is still infectious. We're only keeping it under control with the benefit of these programs and with antiretrovirals, which if taken properly, mean that people are, uh, 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 do not infect other people if the, viral, if the virus is completely suppressed. Funding from PEPFAR, distributed through the USAID and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, has been crucial in plugging certain hard-to-reach gaps within the system. 26 years ago, uh, Glenda, the younger pediatrician, uh, was one of the doctors who was on a demonstration uh, outside the gates of Chris Harney Baragwanath Hospital. In fact, the first kind of major demonstration, the Treatment Action Campaign organized, uh, calling at that stage for a program to prevent mother-to-child uh, HIV uh, transmission. And at that point, if, 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 if my memory is right, Glenda will correct me, you know, we were looking at over 30% rates of infection from mother to child. Now we're down to 2%, again, because of this progress and, and, and in no small part because of the PEPFAR funding uh, uh, later on. Actually, the, the U.S. National Institute of Health has led most of the interventions to um, establish that we can give women ARVs and they can breastfeed their babies safely. And they've established um, um, the, the whole reason why um, HIV in children can be controlled. Recent research co-authored by Professor Linda Gale Becker from the University of Cape Town 
showed that withdrawing PEPFAR support in South Africa without effectively transitioning to supported services would lead to an estimated 601,000 HIV-related deaths and 501,000 new infections in the next 10 years. South Africa has long served as a research hub on the African continent, making important contributions to medical advancements, not just locally, but in the global community. The results of research projects conducted here have been used to improve the response to the HIV AIDS pandemic across the world, with some of the more recent initiatives focusing on groundbreaking work in vaccine development, and HIV prevention tools for women. The USAID and NIH funding cuts have not only threatened the future of these projects, but in some cases have brought clinical trials to a screeching halt. Another facet of the crisis is mass job losses in the health sector, at a time when the country's health system is already struggling to meet the needs of the population. The logistics of delivering a, a highly um, a complex program with the biggest number of people with ARV treatment in the world requires a lot of complex logistics that are not evident on the face of it, you know, so we, you know, so, and I think the nurses too are overwhelmed, you know, they have other things to worry about um, at the clinic. And so now uh, we, we are pushing additional care onto, onto a, already a fragile health system and everything is going to to give, um, and that's what I'm scared of. When you terminate these contracts and withdraw such a large amount of money at such short notice or no notice, uh, you know, people talk about 15,000 jobs uh, being lost, uh, you know, in a, in a health system that is already constrained. Those people play critical functions, data capturers, clinicians in some cases, people working in clinics, researchers, pharmacists, assistant pharmacists, and people who have a deep knowledge of HIV. You're, you're also losing the, the, the skills and you know institutional memory. These institutions have been built up over many years. This research memory that exists is, 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 is being put under is being put under threat. In recent weeks, health experts and activists have spoken out across a number of platforms about the need to find innovative solutions to this burgeoning health crisis. A large emphasis has been placed on the power of collaboration, not only when it comes to local nonprofit organizations and the South African government, but also in terms of South-South cooperation, private sector involvement, and working with other international partners like Europe. Even ordinary South Africans may have a role to play when it comes to creating a more robust and sustainable health ecosystem.